three, two, one. Party. Action. It's action. Hi, it's Valerie. I'm here today again at 1 o'clock. Valerie Wallace Fine Arts. I uh, do a little drawing lesson for you every day. And um, you can follow along live or you can watch it afterwards on my Facebook page. And I'm also putting them on YouTube. There's a playlist that would I think is under free drawing classes with Valerie Wallace Fine Arts. If you put that in, you'll be able to find all of them all together. And you can share those with people who don't do Facebook. And I'm also going to um, put them on IGTV. I just didn't get to that yet. So today we're going to do a Stegosaurus. And um, the thing about it, I want you to notice, I'm going to do one with pastels in color. And then I'm also going to do one with charcoal, which you maybe you're using a pencil. Um, the charcoal just shows up a little bit better, so I'm going to go with that. Um, markers, anything you want, colored pencils, paint, whatever you want to do. Is, is gonna work out great. Um, what I want you to notice about the Stegosaurus is that there's a line almost from its little beaky face that runs right along the bottom of its belly. It's almost all the way across. Goes up a little bit here for the tail. And we're gonna start with that line right there, okay? And then what you see is there's a big hump on him, like kind of like a rainbow. He's sort of, I guess he's sort of triangular shaped if you kind of, you know, a worn down triangle. Okay, so we're going to start with that shape. I'm going to try to make it nice and big and fill up the page so you can see it well. Um, I'm going to start with um, kind of a cool brown. Not like cool, like, you know, funky, but cool as in bluish. All right, rather than my red or brown, the sienna that I usually use. So we're going to do the line that's going to be kind of about from his neck to right about here. So I don't really want you to go all the way across. Leave some room for his face. Because if you start it here, you're really not going to have room for his face. And, and we want to have that on there. So start, when in doubt, make it a little bit shorter than you think you can find you want to add on. So I'm going to go, I need a little room for his legs. And maybe a little bit of something in the foreground. Um, but in the lower half of your page. So probably like right about here. Finley says hi. Hi, Finley. Thanks for watching. Um, that might be a little bit low, but okay. So try that, start with that. And I'm gonna do the charcoal one at the same time right down here. All right, so we'll start like this. The next thing I'm gonna have you do is we're gonna do the, the hump part. So, I mean, in a sense, if I measure how long I made my line, that's about, well, it's a little bit shorter the hump is a little bit shorter so say I measure the line I make that means this was where I was I'll go a little bit lower that's about how high I want to make the back he's a little bit um, bigger towards the right side of your page so if you look at your line and if you found the middle and you went over just a little bit to the right maybe that's the highest peak and you want to have a give yourself a little dot up there to start with so when you come to this side we're gonna come down kind of like this. So we get a little bit narrower here for the neck. On the other side, I'm going to have you do the tail first. So you're going to start right here and you're going to bring this around kind of like a backward C. Okay. And then you're going to start up here and you're going to, con you're hopefully going to connect with that spot right there one way or another. So you're going to come around like this and bring that, that together. Okay, so in this case, if I do it again, if you didn't catch it that time, I'm measuring about how big the line is. That brings me way up here. So I'm going to drop it down. I'm a little bit closer. Hey! Hey, everybody. Oh, Thanks 11. for doing 11 people. All right, fantastic. Blaze loves dinosaurs. Oh, Blaze? Dana says that. I mean, who was I thinking about when I decided to do a dinosaur, right? <laughs> um, okay, so... We're towards the back a little bit. You're going to bring this, work your way kind of down as you get towards that line. And then this one, remember, you're going to start here first. And you're going to bring this around for the tail. And then, then come from here and sketch around, see if you can bring those two together. It looks like something, like a slug right now, doesn't it? Okay. Yep. While I, before I forget, you want to have these kind of big horn type spikes on the back and if you start out and you go back towards the tail and you start out and you go back towards the tail they'll come out super pointy 
If you start here at the tail and you go in and out, a lot of times they don't. So if you want them pointy, try making them in two lines. All right. Okay. I'm going to do that up here too. Start out and go in, start out and go in, and then on the other side. Okay. All right. So now we're going to look a little bit at the face. And um, maybe it's easier to do the chin first because what that does is it kind of comes, continues on a little bit and then comes down. All right. Then we'll start where his forehead is. He does kind of round up a little bit. If you can do that, if it just make it pointy triangle, that's going to be great too. Okay. And then you can come down and you sort of round him around like this. All right. He does have kind of um, like an like an orbit, like an area that holds his eye in there. So you can do the line kind of like that, kind of like this, maybe a, maybe a little eyelid, whatever way you want to do it. If you make the eye kind of on the smaller side, he'll seem a little bit more evil than if you make it um, really big, dull eye, you know, like Bambi or something. But, okay, so I'm gonna bring this one down a little bit, I'm gonna bump this up a little bit, and then I'm gonna connect them. Okay, I'm going to make an arch kind of like this. I'm going to connect that down to here. Okay, maybe this will go back. Like, I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. Okay, good. How are we doing, Veronica? Great. Everybody caught up to this we point? Helena, Arlene, Leanne. Helena, Arlene. Helena and Astrid from England. What's it called, though? Surrey on Sussex on. Couldn't tell you. St. Govins by the Bay or something. I don't know. My friends in London. <laughs> Helena, tell us where you're from. <laughs> okay. All right, let's do it. Um, we're going to do the legs next. Okay? So what you're going to do is we'll start with this one back here. And you see how the upper part, it, it goes way onto his body. Okay? Has a great big thigh bone that's, that sits here, which, which most animals have. Um, it looks a little bit like an ice cream cone. So what you're gonna do is go towards the back here and start with a big rainbow, okay? And then what you're gonna do is bring that line in like this and this one in. Don't, they won't touch, but they'll come in towards each other. And you have sort of that ice cream cone shape. And then um, we're gonna go down, continue from there. You're gonna bring the shin or whatever in, okay? St. Leonard's on the Sea. St. Leonard's on the Sea. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry that I messed that up. But. Um, and, and we want to give them a pretty substantial foot. Okay? They're going to be flat on the bottom. Everybody's foot's flat on the bottom. Um, or else we'd fall over. So a nice flat line like this. And then you can kind of, you know, bring that up. Because, um, you know, this is a big, heavy beast. And it needs a big, solid foot. So give them a big foot. Okay? and a decent sized bit of leg here. So we'll do the other one up here. Same idea, you wanna give them a little neck. So it's gonna start back here a little, but you're gonna have a rainbow, and then you're gonna connect that down to the, to the line. And we're gonna, I have a little plan for how to um, get rid of this extra brown line in here for later, so you won't see it when we're done. Okay, we'll disguise it. And these two lines come forward. You have that flat line on the bottom and up. Okay, so now we've got two legs. If you haven't got that, that's the rainbow, the two lines that come in. Oh, I get that thing in the way. Okay. Okay. Rainbow, two lines. This one's going to come forward a little bit. All right. Okay. Now he has four legs. Okay, so you don't, they don't need to be shown a lot, but you do have to suggest that they're there. Okay, so this one runs right up next to this one, but it's shorter because it's on the other side of his body and he is pretty wide, so there's a big difference. So you're going to have a little piece that comes down here and just cuts in towards that other leg. And I want you to go ahead and color this in while you're at it because this is um, in the shadows underneath his belly, so that we're going to have that be darker. Okay. And then the one in the back up here goes um, kind of this way. So I'm going to put it right around my horns. And what we'll, I will do is use that dark to um, offset the lighter bit on the horns, if 
I can. If I draw really carefully around there. Luck if you're lucky, you don't have to even deal with that. All right, there's that. Same thing on black and white, if that's what you're working with. Okay, and then here I'm gonna have a little And with the charcoal, we have to start getting your finger in there and blend things in. If, if you don't like to get your fingers dirty, you can, um, well, this is a, a special um, paper stump for, for blending things in, and that works pretty well because you can be real careful with that. Um, you could also just get a cloth, like a little, um, like a t-shirt kind of cloth, and put it over your finger, and then you um, sort of like... You know, sort of like this, only it works better with a t-shirt cloth because it's thinner and smaller. Okay? All right. All right, so we've got our basic body on here right now. The next thing we're going to do are put to put the plates on. And the deal is, is that there's two rows of plates that run down his back. That's why we have the dark ones are the ones that are on this side of his body. And then the lighter ones are the ones that are just a little bit on the other side of his body. And they're catching the light from the sun. So we're going to do a little bit of shading with this, just in that just helps you, so you'll be able to see the two different different ones. If you if you just want to make them all the same, like triangles up across the back, it's work, it works great. Okay. Um, the the basic shape. I'd start right here. What happens is they kind of veer out just a little bit. They're kind of like a house or like a little cottage with a thatched roof, and then you start up at the top like this, and you go like that. Okay. You don't need 20, you know, four, three or four on either side it will be plenty, maybe even less than that. So I'm going to go here, I'll make another one like this, and then they're a little bit smaller. Depending on how big your beast is, they're going to get a little bit smaller, okay? So have them like that, and you want to space them out a little bit because that's going to give us that little area to put the um, ones that are on the other side in there, okay? All right, so far so good. You got it, Veronica? I got it. We're like almost done. Almost. I think. Mm. <laughs> Maybe. All right, pretty soon we're gonna get the coloring in there. Shading, that's gonna be the good part. If you haven't figured out what my favorite color is. Go See ahead. if you can guess and let me know. <laughs> okay, okay. So we have the front row of spikes. We're gonna put the, the, the back row of spikes on. Mm, you know what, let's start coloring. We'll, we'll um, no, no, no. Let's do it, but when you do the one, if you're working in color, pick another shade. I'm going to use, um, what was I going to use? Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to use a green. Yeah. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use this green. Okay. And they're a little bit smaller. Okay, there's a little bit of perspective. So when you go to make them, all you have to do is make kind of a little triangle that connects between these guys. If you're doing it in black and white, um, just go ahead and sketch them in there, but you want them smaller. Okay, and we're gonna we'll make the we'll make them they'll show we'll make them show up because they're gonna be light. Okay, good. A little mm -hmm. under mm -hmm. on. You with me, Veronica? Harper and Finn are loving it so much. And Harper guesses your favorite color is green. Close, Harper. Close. You're very, very close, but it is not green, but it might have, mm, I mean, I'm giving you a little hint, a little Apron, hint. shirt, <laughs> curtains. I'm Second guess, Harper, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's start coloring. So what I want to do first is to put the shade, the dark, the dark parts in. I'm going to stick with, I'll just go back to the, um, the dark brown that I have here. And one of the tricks to see the shadows, this is pretty obvious, but if you're doing something 
that you're not so sure if you can see them is that if you squint your eyes at your the, the picture that you're working from or even the scene say you're drawing like stuff out you know a landscape or something that will help you to see the dark things will really stand out against the light things and then you have you know things in between but that will help you to see those shapes because it's confusing sometimes but that is a secret that I learned at at Rhode Island School of Design where uh, so there you go it's like professional advice right there okay first thing I'm gonna do I notice that his neck is mostly dark so I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna do the neck and I'm gonna go right here in between his legs for the belly and this is gonna go right up um, it's teal guys it's teal <laughs> not not blue or orange it's teal. <laughs> I just want to lay that out there. <laughs> Aqua. Aqua. Or turquoise. Turquoise if, um, if Mantool is out there. Um, turquoise. Okay. I do... <laughs> <laughs> Someone said orange. Amy Farrow said orange. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope she was I on. love all kinds of colors, but this today I'm going to get some of my favorite color in it, so I just was like thinking about it. Okay, so you're running, this will kind of, you know, maybe connect like that all along. You're going to put a little bit extra, maybe right at the base of the plates on the back, kind of like that. The, the, the whole tail, we're going to go kind of dark on that. All right? All right, let me do it down here. Don't overthink it. It's just for fun. I think the plan is, you know, you get to make something while you learn a few things and you'll, and stuff you hear over and over again, you'll start to remember all on your own. And then um, when you're making your own pictures, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember something I can do about that. Um, but none of it is, you know, should be just for fun. Chance to learn something from somebody besides your parents <laughs> for a little while. Okay, maybe you can teach them a few things. Okay, so on the the um, charcoal, I don't want to go too dark, but, and then what I do is I'm going to, and then I'll go ahead, actually, let me do the edge here too. All right, so then I'm going to take my finger, not my whole hand, not both of my hands, not my nose, just a finger, maybe two fingers if you're really small. Even if you're having a pencil, you if you use a nice soft pe leaded pencil, you'll be able to smudge. I'm going to go right over the face while I'm at it. Okay? And I found this other one. If you, um, this is another nice soft leaded pencil, these kind for carpentry. Um, if somebody in your house has one of those, um, you could use that. Again, you're trying, you're looking for things that have, that are a B. Those are the soft leaded pencils. Um, a 4B would probably be your best bet if you could get, if you have like a little kit of pencils or 6B, but if you only have a just regular yellow pencil at home, that's probably a 2B and that'll work well too. Okay. Um, all right. So with the legs, what we're going to do, are we there? Are you with me, Veronica? You with uh, me? She's no. kind of doing it her own way. <laughs> she's going rogue on me. I, okay. I am. That's okay. That's okay. You do it any way you want to do it. It's fine with me. Um, so what I'm going to have you do is shade right here. If you can, you can kind of round this line on the leg a little bit. Oops. And that will help if you kind of bring that, actually in this one it's up the front a little bit, but if you kind of connect that, that'll just make that line that we drew in the beginning in the middle of the leg, it'll kind of disappear. So same thing here. Do that leg. And then I'm just going to work it up into the flank here a little bit like that. And then I'll just smudge that. And then I can see, and what you're looking for is to be able to still see this thigh. It's not the most important contrast area, but the darker you go right next to the um, this big hip bone back here, the more that's going to show up. Okay, and, and right here, what you run up against is that this is colored in, and so is this little stump of a leg. Well, you know, well, you know what it is. It's not like if, if they're a little confusing that, oh, well, what could that thing be possibly on the other side of his leg? It's going to be his other leg. 
But if you want to, um, you can take an eraser and you erase a little bit right along the edge here. Okay, and then, can you see it, Veronica? The difference between these two? Yeah. Okay. So then you can see the two because you made one lighter. You've created some contrast there so you can see. Back here you might have this little teeny spot which we call a negative space. And if you do, then that helps you see the back leg. Okay, we're good. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta color the green one. In the meantime, if you've gotten this far, you're going to color every other um, plate up here, okay? Skip, skip the ones that are in the back, and we'll either color them lighter or we'll just use our finger and smudge them, and then they'll look different. Um, I'm going to do finish the brown up here. And so with this one, now I'll do the same thing. Um, if I go a little darker out here than back there. And then, uh, all right. But I'm going to use a light green on the body. So, on the colored one. If you want, that's kind of what's going on with this. If you want your favorite color to be the color on your stegosaurus, then you go for it. You make it anything you want because it's your picture, you can do whatever you want. You know? I'm going to use this, and when I do it, I'm going to color right over the brown. And that's sort of going to use the brown as a shadow, but it will also make it kind of a brownish greenish, and it will make more sense with the rest of it. So I don't have to think too much about it. Go right over those legs. If that way, if you if you don't color super super dark, you'll find it's easier to add another color. If you go as hard as you can, um, the paper can only hold so much pigment. So you know you, you may not be able to get much more on there. Um, Jen Morris was asking me earlier if you have a place you want to try to get rid of. Actually, I forgot to say that you may even find you can use an eraser. Um, it might erase this, depending on the kind of paper you use. But you can also use um, a solvent to on oil pastels to kind of spread them around and turn them into paint. Um, we do it a lot with the water soluble. Those are kids that have been here. You've all used water soluble. I don't give you turpentine to paint with. But um, uh, you could do a little sketching on there, a little coloring, especially if you're working bigger, and then you take a brush with turpentine, but I don't know whether you'd be able to use maybe um, fingernail polish remover too. That might work, but, or you could get a special solvent for it, but you, um, that will spread it around and you won't have to color everything in because you can kind of put a little color on there and paint it in. Maybe I'll do it one of these days when I can open a window. Can't open a window today because it's only like, 40 degrees here, here in Orno, Maine. Okay, um, yeah. All right, how am I doing here? All right, so I'm gonna color these. I'm gonna come back and use a darker color to kind of um, define things a little bit. So don't worry if, you look, if it looks a little crazy. So I'm gonna do these and then we'll just pull it all together and we'll be done. All right. So if I color every other one, okay, then what I'll do is I'll take my finger, I'll blend those a little bit, and I'll take my finger and I'll color the um, lighter ones. All right. Now the others, is, are we all caught up? Everybody with me now? You think? No one said they're not. Speak okay. up now. Okay. So one of the, the most important things in this picture is something you probably would never suspect, but it's the shadow that runs underneath here. Because by putting a shadow here, that means that our stegosaurus has a shape that's stopping the light from hitting the ground. And that means in our subconscious, if not in your conscious, that it creates space, that it has form. The, the good thing or the, the the best thing to do is to make sure that you leave a space between the stegosaurus's belly and the shadow. You want to have this little negative space here because it 
It's important. I don't know. I don't want to explain it. But anyway, and so that will touch. Uh, this is the time where I'm using my favorite color. Um, because I like how that looks with those. So you just pick something darker. You know, it can be black, it can be dark blue, it can be purple, dark green, um, dark pink, whatever you want to do. And when I come to where my little spikes are on the tail, I want to go as carefully as I can around those because they'll be left white behind and then they'll show up. They'll have a little contrast there. So I can bring the shadow, like say that the hump of his back is you know, causing a shadow that's a little bit bigger than just underneath them, but I can add a little bit here. Okay, probably right around his tail. Oh, I forgot one of my little plates. Okay, so there's that. I want to have this little space here. I'm not going to color in all of the background today. You can do that, and then you can send me a picture, and I would love, love, love to see See how it comes out. I just, I just makes me so happy when I see the pictures posted. The best place to do it is on um, this video when it's on my Facebook page, and you just do it in the comments, okay? Um, unless you don't want anybody to see, and then you can just message me. Um, put the shadow there. I'm gonna do the shadow down here. If it kind of blends in with when you're using pencil or whatever with. Um, the dinosaur don't worry about that because that's sort of what happens in reality some things really stand out and some things don't stand out so much that's okay okay you have something like that again you could use an eraser and kind of modify where you want things to show where you don't care so there's that um so i'm going to take something darker you might want black um to do a little accenting just to make sure we can see the parts i'm going to use purple because it's another one of my favorite colors. <laughs> and, and can you guess what my other favorite color is? Fuchsia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I helped everybody. <laughs> okay, purple. I'm gonna put a little bit, I think this is gonna work. I'm gonna put a little bit on the eye. Maybe a little bit around the eye. I'm gonna put a little bit up his back here. Um, Okay, give him a little def definition here, maybe on his body. I want to mark at least part of the way around these legs, I guess. Okay. Not to outline everything necessarily, but you can always, the thing is, a great thing to do too is to take it and um, stick it up on a wall a little distance away and then look at it. And, and it will look different. It's a little trickier when you're using pencil because it's really probably meant to be seen closer. But if you have a little color on there, it should read, if you've used the, you know, darks and lights where, where you, where are appropriate, then you should be able to see, um, all the parts when you get it across the room. All right, maybe I'm going to go a little darker on the legs back here. The other thing you're looking for too is that this line is going to stop when it gets to a leg and then come out on the other side. That helps to put these legs on the outside of the body. All right. I'm good with that. I'll just smudge that in. I'm good with this. Um, maybe a little longer chin here too. You know, the features are always important on anything that has eyes, nose, and mouth. You know, think a little bit about that. Do you think it has a. Um, a tongue. I'm gonna give it a, a tongue. tongue? I don't, I don't I'm gonna give it a fork. It's gonna look like an ant eater. No, I'm gonna give it a forked tongue. <laughs> <laughs> no? No, it's fine. <laughs> I won't do it on this one. Okay, down here. Down here we're good. I don't need to accent here. So there's just a couple of things you could do in the background. Um, doing these ferns are actually pretty easy. Um, maybe I wanna mark, uh, kind of like where the horizon line is. I could color in here if I want, I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna really bother. But if I had, um, if you branch a little bit like this and then you just sketch out in one direction, okay, and then you can kind of go in the other direction, kind of herringbone, you'll have sort of a, you know, and if you do this light, it kind of doesn't take away from the subject. Oh, Veronica, you're doing great. Thanks. Okay. 
She's knocking this one out of the park. The other thing I was gonna do is put a little, if we put some grass in the front and you actually overlap the, the dinosaur a little bit, it starts to make him look like he's, you want it to touch the bottom of your page though. So make sure that the grass starts here and then you can kind of bring it right up over and he'll look like it makes it three, more three dimensional too because you've overlapped a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna do that with the down here, um, and then we'll be good. If you have anything you need to know, ask now, and tell. And Veronica will tell me. Yeah, everybody's good. No one, no one said anything. If you have anything you were interested in drawing and you want to let me know. Have somebody send me a message and because I don't know what to do. I mean, I know what to do once I figure out what uh, we're going to draw, but that's the hardest thing is trying to figure out what everybody wants to do. Um, if you want to make a donation for as little as a dollar, then I know you're out there. Um, you can go to my website, which is ValerieWallaceFineArts.com and um, you click on the ticket page and there's a ticket option um, to uh, send me a buck if you want, or a little more if you want to. And I will really think that's awesome. Um, I'm going to put a little sun here and maybe a little rolling hills in the distance. All right. Oh, and this one for those for that person who thinks I love orange. Let's do it. His orange looks great with teal. A nice little sun like that, or you can put the little... Who doesn't mind that? Because it's hot. Okay, are we good? I'm getting shout outs for a tiger or jaguar. I have that on my list of things to do, then that's awesome. Okay, I'm all, all good. Thank you so much. Please share with, um, with your friends or somebody you think that needs to, you know, something fun to do. Thanks.